Hey hey, so I just came back from work and I thought I make another personal video to let you know what's going on these days. And yeah, basically I was sick, I had a bacterial infection, so I couldn't do much these days. Well, maybe except the video I was doing uh, about Tromjaro. Um, because actually, you know, after I uh, went to the doctor, he gave me some um, antibiotics. And then I think like after two or three days it was good again. And yeah, so I could work today. Um, and I yeah, <laughs> want to tell you a little bit about it because it's so ridiculous if you think about it. And the funny thing is, or not funny, it's sad. It's, it's just, I cannot put it in words. Like there are multiple layers of ridiculousness. The first one is that what I'm doing is that I basically unwrap stuff, unpacking it and then putting it into a box and then put that box somewhere. And that's it. That's what I'm doing. Unpacking stuff, unwrapping it and then putting it into a box. And like the first ridiculousness is now that we can automate these things. Like humans should not uh, be used in order to do such things when we have machines and robots to do that. And the second thing is that I get 11 euros per hour for doing that task. And now think about a poor tribe like Nepal or like Ethiopia or Bangladesh or so. And then think about the people who are working so hard every fucking day, like even children have to go to work and work hard and they earn less than a dollar per uh, day. It's like, and I'm just like unwrapping stuff, unpacking it, putting it into a box and get 11 euros for doing that. It's like, what the fuck is going on? Actually, I have been to Nepal. I have seen like people searching through the rubbish, searching through the trash because they had no other means of surviving. And I will also show a picture now um, where that I took from Nepal. And I've also seen little children walking in construction, like um, carrying around heavy stones on their back and just like super poor. I think they, yeah, earned very little compared to what I earn now. So, um, yeah, it's just insane if you think about it. Like, if you think about the world, it makes no sense at all. Like, I'm doing this right now and I get 11 euros per hour and other people are struggling day by day, earning less than that in a day. So, um, yeah, I'm also thinking about those people and I'm, I'm sad because I want to change that, but it's so hard. Like, how can you do that? It's really tricky. But, um, yeah, my other option would be uh, to work in a bakery, but I think um, yeah, to work in a bakery is super stressful because like whenever somebody comes you need to serve them of course so I guess it can be super stressful and compared to that the job that I have right now in the warehouse is um, okay so I think the best thing is just to stick with that now and then um, yeah see how it goes do that like maybe twice or three times a week or so and then I'm fine and can focus on other stuff. I think eventually it doesn't matter where you work. Like if you work at Subway or in a bakery or in a warehouse or so, basically everywhere you're just slaving away. You're trading your time, your energy, your skills and so on in order to get money to buy what you need and want. And that's just ridiculous if we think about the world where we have an abundance of stuff, we have more food than people can eat, more homes than people can live in, yet still people are forced to like just slave away. And I was also thinking, what if you earn money with doing something that you really like, what you really enjoy doing, like for example making music or so. And then I was just thinking about Avicii, like, you know, the DJ that got so famous so fast. And then he also had this pressure of like slaving away, walking every day, making his shows every day or like every week at least. And that was so much stress for him that he eventually, um, yeah, gave up with his life and just killed himself. 
So, and I was also thinking, what if you have like one million dollars or one million euros or one billion dollars or euros, then do you own that money or does the money own you? Because if you have so much money, you need to take care of it. You don't want to lose any of that money. Probably you want to have more of that money. So I think it's like fucked up. And I'm just thinking we are keeping each other ourselves trapped in that trade game and yeah just because nobody knows how to do otherwise maybe or just yeah i don't know just for the sake of trading like and i don't know if there are many people who are like so rich and they are happy i don't know i, I really don't know if that um, comes hand in hand in fact, I think very rich people are super poor, have maybe um, bad or poor social relations. Maybe they are lonely, alone and yeah, depressed. I don't know. I'm also just thinking about um, this interview that I watched with this rich guy, with this, um, he was a hedge fund manager actually, um, called Florian Homm, he's from Germany. And he had an interview where he um, talked about his life when he was like managing, I think, billions or even trillions of dollars um, in a hedge fund. And he had to like invest and take care of that and make more money eventually. And he was saying that he worked um, like so much, he only slept for three or four hours a day and he was super stressed out. And he had all those expensive things like a fancy car, expensive villa, he had yachts and all that. So he really was super rich. And he was saying he was just struggling in the hamster wheel day by day. Was hast du von dem Geld gekauft? Viel Spielzeuge, die man kaum nutzte. Also irgendwann waren es mal zwei Privatflugzeuge, eine ja, nette kleine Superjacht, ungefähr 6.000, 7.000 Quadratmeter Wohnfläche, also verteilt auf vier, fünf größere Immobilien. Palazzi, Schlösser, Apartments in London, New York, Kunstsammlungen im Privatzoo. Einiges war sinnvoll, vieles war einfach nur schwachsinnig. Und das Ironischste war, auf meiner Yacht habe ich, glaube ich, sechs Tage verbracht und äh, in einem, meinem Palazzo in Marbella, der ehemals der saudi-arabischen Familie gehörte, mit 2300 Quadratmeter, eine schlappe Nacht. Nina Lee möchte von dir wissen, wie viele Stunden am Tag hast du gearbeitet? 6 mal 16 Stunden äh, plus 6 Stunden am Sonntag. Das geht aber auch, wenn du äh, dein Schwimmbad vor der Tür hast, dein Tennisplatz ist vor der Tür, dein Helikopterplatz ist vor der Tür, dein Privatzoo ist vor der Tür, du hast Putzfrau, du hast Koch, du hast Chauffeur, du hast Kapitän, du hast Piloten und so weiter und du machst sonst gar nichts. Aber die Schlafzeit war auch nur 4 Stunden maximal. Vier, also 5 Stunden schlafen war der reinste Luxus, waren auch manchmal 3 und auch manchmal drei Tage ohne Pen, also ein extremes Energielevel. Macht Geld glücklich? Geld macht nicht glücklich, aber Gold, Schlösser und Privatjets. Nein, Bullshit. Du musst völlig aufpassen, in der Liga, in der ich dann gespielt habe, bist du eigentlich in einem goldbespickten Hamsterrad. Deine zeitliche Verfügbarkeit ist relativ gering. Du bist zwar, meinst du bist selbstbestimmt, aber dein Vermögen fängt an, dich zu bestimmen. Eine ganz andere Dimension. Okay, denk mal drüber nach. And um, yeah, I think that just shows that um, yeah, it makes no sense what we're doing here on planet Earth. <laughs> And if you didn't realize that yet, um, you should really like look around the world and see and realize how things are fucked up. I mean, the origin of most problems, our book explains that in detail and I'm so happy now that I made like videos about that book so I can now focus on positive things, on solutions. I made that video about Trumjaro and I will also make one about Friendica, which is a trade-free um, social network. And you know, that's what really boggles my mind. Like, I saw the social dilemma and I think they really showed pretty well how fucked up these um, companies are, like Facebook and so on. And they just want your attention and data. 
But what the problem was with that documentary is that for one, they didn't talk about the force, what pushes those companies to get as much data and attention from their users. And second, they did not even mention alternatives like Mastodon or like Friendica or like so many other social networks from the Fediverse who are decentralized, who are open source, who don't want anything from you, they are trade free and they didn't even mention them in the documentary. And this is so fucked up. Um, so yeah, I just, I, I just have to make videos about those things because they are so amazing and volunteers are working for those things. Um, it's just, yeah, just an amazing thing what they are doing there. Then on another personal note, um, yeah, as you can see, I cut my hair, so on the side a bit, um, actually a friend was doing that. And um, otherwise, yeah, I'm sometimes a bit struggling with life in general. <laughs> I think like so many other um, students or also people from um, planet Earth, like yeah you have to think about okay how do you get money and then now about the study like should i really do that study i mean it is interesting but it is also a lot and um, then i will definitely keep doing my videos because i'm so passionate about them so um, yeah and then also thinking about the world and knowing how everything is fucked up it really can stress you out in a way but then i also like to listen to peter joseph and his podcast revolution now and i think it's always interesting to tune into what um, he's saying and what his thoughts are um, so i really enjoy that oh and what i forgot to mention is that i had another food sharing collection i'm having them on a regular basis now and i had so much bread again so i just decided to give it away as trade free for students who live in that same building yo yo i just came back from a food sharing collection and i got um, also a lot of bread so i just thought to make a sign saying trade free food i don't know if you can read it but yeah i just wanna um, like give it to students for free of course i don't expect anything in return and maybe some will check out the tradefree.org website. <laughs> I think it's just a kind of nice thing to do. So um, yeah, just maybe small actions also do have an impact. Um, that's as a last kind of quote or <laughs> last kind of thought. <laughs> mm -hmm.